Hi, I'm Alex Archbull, and I've been buying and selling antiques since I was nine years old. From basements to scrapyards, I'll look just about anywhere I can to find lost antiques and collectibles. And sometimes I'll go big and buy everything. With my wife and kids, we run an antique shop in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, filled with some of the most unique items we can find. I never know what's going to happen or who I'm going to meet. This is our life, this is our adventure, and this is Curiosity Inc. I'm home, honey! Hi everyone, well it's been a little bit since I've um, done a video because I've been super busy working on getting ready for yet another auction sale. Now as I speak right now, we have our final Musician's House jewelry sale happening. It ends on Saturday, which is uh, at the end of the week here. In the meantime though, my entire garage has been swamped and full of hockey and baseball and football and non-sports cards as we get ready for a sports card sale. Now I've decided to put a whole bunch of this stuff through auction uh, because it would take me forever to sell all this stuff at the store. Um, so my poor little garage here, which was clean, is now a big hot mess as I sort through all this stuff. Um, but today's the day that I hopefully get a bunch of it cleared out. I uh, have to head over to the auction house to pick up tags and um, get them all organized and sorted and off and on their way. It's also a good chance for me to go and see how things are going with the uh, current sale, the jewelry sale, and um, check out the display they've got. So uh, I think we'll load up in the car, head off to the auction and see what's going on. It is cold outside today. Just how cold is it? Well, at least minus 30 degrees. <laughs> and the poor rock chips that I had in my car have splintered and spidered. These FJ Cruisers are terrible for um, one thing, and that's rock chips, but we'll fix that come springtime. In the meantime, though, I'm going to uh, bear the weather and uh, go, ooh, apparently go get gas. That's, uh, look how dusty my car's gotten, too. <laughs> All these uh, adventures are taking their toll but uh, springtime cleaning will come. But I better go get gas before this becomes an issue. Nothing like uh, running out of gas. I've done that before. All right. Offloaded my car of all the, well, a good number of sports cards, all in binders and sealed sets and all that stuff. And I have another truckload of this stuff to bring in tomorrow. And that should be enough to have probably about 500 lots for the sale um, two Sundays from now. In the meantime though, I've got to go find uh, Lucas and we're going to shoot a little promotional video for the auction house here for the uh, jewelry sale. Let's see if I can track him down. Oh, I see, I see his leather jacket over there. All right, and Lucas is here. You said your car didn't start this morning, right? Hey, I like that mask. <laughs> Thank you, yeah. No, it's just bad out. It's not, it's not great. Uh, that's not an exact replica of your face underneath the mask? No, it's, it's pretty one-to-one. -one. <laughs> it's one-to-one, -one. okay. <laughs> but yeah, you said your car wouldn't start? No, no dice. I had to knock on my neighbor's door and he was, he was good about it, but I don't think he liked getting woken up at 8.30 with just day. <laughs> <laughs> need, a, need a boost. Hey, at least you got a neighbor to help you with that. Now we have, Lucas has been so kind as to open the back. Um, there are these beautiful dresses, which actually I had a sale on. Somebody in New York wanted them, and then um, I set them aside, and they didn't contact me back. So we have a Dion von Furstenberg original, and this beautiful sort of bespoke beaded dress here um, that are going to make probably the only some of the only clothing items that we'll have through the sale. But again, there's, you know, containers full of... Um, silver dollars and coins and um, sapphire, like I said, sapphire bracelets and um, just tray after tray after tray of remarkable and cool items, uh, including jars of pennies. Remember we found all those pennies in the kitchen? Well, I put them in jars and put them up for sale. All of this stuff is going to go this weekend. Uh, the nesting hen dishes, everybody was interested in those. Lapidary stones. Um, some paintings. It's just, uh, this whole room basically is stuff that's going through on that auction sale. Uh, and I'll be curious, oh, here's the curtains. They definitely have that 50s sort of look. Brocade 50s curtains that people were all crazy about when I found them in the closet. They've been probably sitting in that closet since the 50s. But, you know, it's just a matter of following it online now and seeing how uh, how things are gonna roll out. 
There was even this 1961 Barbie. And she's got her vintage little outfit. It looks like maybe you push a button on the back. Yeah, you do. You push a button and her head turns. Look at that. Must be some sort of specialty Barbie of the era. And all the clothes. She has as many clothes as Madame Rack did, just about. Not as organized. So we'll put that back together. So that whole set will go up for auction as well. Oh, here's the, um, the telegraph with the sounder. Nice brass piece. A lot of neat stuff. I can't look around too much because I, I remember how cool the stuff is. But staying focused on getting that building up. So the auction house is low on showcases at the moment. So everything is basically just posted on their website. So we're kind of going through and seeing how bids are going. Um, and so far, so good. Let's see, we have starting to get some bids on the rings and the necklaces. And there's, there was so much stuff. I couldn't believe we had another 970 lots for this sale. It's just insane. But, um, you know, there's silver and sapphire bracelets. And uh, this was a really neat piece. There's a silver ring with garnet cluster, sort of, it's a big piece too, kind of a big chunky ring. There's the uh, 50s indigenous carved stone fish that I found like on our first or second day in the house. Just all sorts of fun stuff. So all of this uh, will be ending on uh, this coming Saturday, I think it is. And uh, hopefully we'll, you know, we'll do a live feed in the morning and watch and see how things go. But, um, you know, I'm still flabbergasted by the amount of jewelry that uh, Madame Rack had hidden all around her house and uh, even more so grateful that they were the ones that uh, were able to find it as it's gonna help us along our way um, to getting that building completed. So um, things look like they're going well at the auction. I'm probably gonna head over to the shop and, uh, and see if my building is falling apart in this minus 40 weather. Okay, everything is loaded over at the auction. Um, now it's kind of in their hands to start organizing, getting it ready. I'm off to the shop. With it being so cold outside, um, Melissa's car had a hard time starting this morning too. And honestly, it's one of those days where you kind of just uh, don't even feel like going to work. But it's only a week out of the year that's like this. Otherwise, it's generally pretty nice. Um, but it's this one week that makes you really second guess what the heck you're doing here. Kind of hoping it's a quiet day at the store a little bit because I have a, a lot of work I have to get caught up on. It'd be a great day to uh, sweep and mop and clean and do all that kind of stuff. Um, so I'm going to keep myself fairly busy either way. But um, I doubt very much whether we're going to have a whole lot of customers in the store. I guess we'll have to wait and see. Uh, and I got to make sure that the shop, um, you know, no water pipes have frozen and that the heat's still working good because things can go wrong in this kind of weather. So it is good to check on the shop. But we'll go park. See what we have to face and uh, do a little work around the store today, see what happens. I'm doing this portion from my house, if you can't tell, because I forgot to mention that Steven and I went on a pick the other day, uh, went for a little car ride and found a couple neat things too. What did we find? Let me show you. You sometimes come across coin collections, but this was a special one. These are all Roman Empire coins, um, Roman Republic, and they're the big ones. You know, you oftentimes find the small ones and there's, um, and for a jars that they find, they dig them up out of the ground and they're full of these things and often they're encrusted. Usually they're little like that guy right there. But these are um, in really reasonable shape. You know, when you can make out the, the faces and the names and you know, that's what you're looking for. The more detail, the better. Um, stampings were always a little bit crude back then. And you know, they actually had to hit them with a hammer basically to stamp them. But you know, we're talking about um, Persian coins, um, ancient Indian coins ancient Indian coppers. Um, like I said, Roman, these are more Persian, more Roman. Uh, and the Persian empire was an important part of history too. You look at this Alexandrian uh, Egypt under the Roman empire, Spanish coins. There's just all sorts of really cool stuff in here. And I got this whole collection in one fell swoop. Um, even some random um, old, I don't know if you can see through here, but there's um, American coins too that, uh, oh, well, they're stuck in there. Anyway, you get the idea. Those are like 1800s American quarters and some slightly newer ones. That's a 1900 US quarter. A little worn out, you know, to say the least. These are pretty worn, but 
the earlier the better when it comes to American coins. Not quite as old as the Roman stuff, but hey, what a cool collection. It's gonna take me a while to go through all this and um, figure out what they're all worth. <laughs> Meanwhile, in the store, it's nice and toasty, which is good because I was having some problems with my uh, furnace at the main part of the shop here up at the front. The fireplace I put in uh, last year, the year before, when uh, Josh and I did the rebuild, seems to be working just fine. Uh, but everything seems good so far. Um, no major issues. You know, it, it seems crazy to think that weather like this, when you get minus uh, 40, 42 um, with that wind chill, uh, yeah, you can have pipes that freeze or things that go wrong with your building or property, uh, especially an old one like this. Uh, this is basically just built on a dirt floor, so I'm always a little bit concerned. But so far, the old uh, building seems to be standing up just fine. I did notice one thing when I got in today. So we have one of the coldest days of the year. And over the weekend, my ice cream cooler got restocked, <laughs> which... Uh, the last cooler broke down and everything melted, so they gave me a credit, and it looks like we our restock order came just in the nick of time. Well, these sort of things do sell all year round, but it's the warm weather that drives ice cream sales. Ah, uh, what to do, what to do. I've got some bins full of stock and some empty boxes I've got to put away, get that stuff cleaned up later on. This was a little uh, 1950s telephone table that came in last week, cute little piece. Even put an old-fashioned phone on it just to make it look right. Um, this would be a good day for me to kind of restock some things. We have been running low. We carry soap that's actually made in our area here, and we are running quite low of almost all categories here, uh, even our natural cleaners that we sell. So it's time that I actually run my business too and start to do some restock orders. So soap I need. Mm, mugs maybe a little restock there we're running low on some of our shirts where we've got all these uh canadian branded shirts so i think what i'll do today is i'll spend some time <laughs> uh to restock some of my fun things that we have around the shop including these sassy socks and yes we are an antique store but all the uh other sorts of things do sell too and we've been selling a heck of a lot of jam the past week we've been selling the jam like crazy uh so i think today's gonna be just a nice hopefully quiet restocking day and i'll get some orders placed and see what i'm missing i also have to walk around the shop and figure out what product categories in the store am i overloaded on and one is cameras i have been um well we bought a thousand of these things last year a thousand vintage cameras uh, they do sell, um, and since we brought them in, other people walk through and they say, oh, you must sell cameras, and then I get more cameras. Uh, I'm not intending to be a used camera store, but that's happened, so I might end up doing an auction sale just to blow out a bunch of these cameras. Um, it's good to walk around your shop every once in a while and try and think of what to do differently. It keeps people interested, it keeps people on their toes, and uh, coming back because you just never know what's gonna be here when you come in next time. But uh, for me right now, um, it's placing those orders for our stock and really looking at ways to fine tune the business and uh, make it look great. Boy, it's been like a month and I didn't realize I still had stuff from that house that I've not put out yet. I, for I completely forgot about this little lamp. There's still boxes of stuff that came out of the house that I have not uh, put away yet. So I guess my work really is cut out for me today that I have boxes of unpacked merchandise lying around here. Boy, oh boy. This is some of the stuff that I thought I was missing. I couldn't find it. The little lamp, the Art Deco lamp with that really cool flower bulb that's on it. <laughs> um, all the STP uh, racing stickers that I thought were, I had no idea what happened to those. Apparently I did bring them back. The Toyota playing cards. I've had people asking me about this stuff for like the past couple of weeks saying, where is it? Look, there's even surprisingly more jewelry, rather not surprisingly, little tins and toys. Yeah, I, I just can't believe that there's still stuff lying around. Scarf. 
scarves. So there's still bins I have to put out. I know I had people interested in this stuff for sure. There's the uh, candlestick phone I got out of the, the other hoarded house that I didn't end up buying the contents of. I just bought the phone and a couple little things out of there. So that came out. Uh, let's see. Books. What were books that I felt I had to save? Oh yeah, Wyatt Earp. Spin and Marty. A towel for some reason that I kept. A fake buffalo skull. Artist made piece. Yeah, totally forgot that this stuff was all sitting around. Obviously it's things that I thought I could resell if I put it in a box to bring it back to the store. The first small step. Project Mercury book. Hmm. Peterson's book of man in space. Yeah, Peterson's did automotive guides too. Hopefully it's not how to build your own rocket. Super scope compact music system. Okay. Well, that was fast. I was just talking about restocking the soap and uh, the owner of West Mountain Soap has come in, uh, walked in on this crazy cold day. You look like you're bundled up though. Yeah, it's a little cool out there. So we've got our order here. I guess I'm gonna owe you some money. The soap's been selling really well. People have been uh, enjoying it, loving it. And uh, I'm looking forward to having some more back on the shelf too. I always thought this was a good idea, the shampoo bar. Cause if you ever, when we can eventually fly again, um, these are handy because uh, they take liquids at the at, at the check-in and stuff, but they don't take bars like this, right? So you, sh you should be able to carry that in your carry-on and not get into trouble. Well, that's perfect. Thanks very much for coming in and bringing this in today. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Well, as suspected, it hasn't been busy with customers. Um, however, we are getting some phone calls around the shop. Curiosity, Inc. Alex speaking. Soap is out and on display. Sure, I wish you had smell o vision with how good this smells over here. That is done. Mm, still haven't cleaned up my garbage yet over there. Um, and we had a delivery come from one of our viewers at home. Linda sent us cookies. So cold day, cookies, winning combination. Well, it's not been completely quiet around here. I have been mopping my floors and cleaning up, but Bob came by. Any new bottles lately, Bob? I picked up one today, uh, an old 7-Up bottle from the 60s. Other than that, it's not been too busy. Not no, uh, But you're mainly looking for old poison bottles. Yeah, I'm, and... I'm after the more uh, the rarer type bottles now that... Uh, What's the most expensive bottle that you've seen advertised for sale? A skull-shaped blue poison bottle, about yay big, yep. sold for over $5,000. Whoa, and that, so it was shaped like a skull? It's shaped like a skull. Wow, you know, and that's the stuff if somebody watching is watching at home and they look through the box they have in their attic and find some old skull-shaped poison bottles, they might be sitting on a fortune. They, they might be. It was in an auction and I was into it for 2500 and then I was out and it just kept climbing. Yeah, those, those sort of things don't come around every day. Well, they don't. They're, they're tough ones to find. It's always like the unique, odd stuff. It's funny, uh, our friend Greg was in here, he's into typewriters, and he saw this and I, we were both commenting on how cool it was. It's a little miniature typewriter. Um, German made and um, it has the original box and everything but it seems like the more unique the thing is the, the better there is a draw for it so we had and we're all keeping socially distanced here we've got Bob the bottle man we've got eagle man Todd who drives the eagle half ton sitting outside last time we were here Todd we had a whole group of kids piled around your truck and you started it with your command start and scared the I, I think I saw their ghost jump out of their body like on a cartoon and then back in again <laughs> and then our friend Bill has come by to say hello too. Hello. Uh, Bill is a chef and cook and always brings me treats. Uh, so to our good friend, our German friend, Bill over there, thank you for all that you do and coming in. So this is it. It's been a quiet day. We're all just the three of us kind of hanging out and, uh, and visiting. And I think Bill is buying a teacup here today. And you said that this was one that your mom had. She had a set of dishes like that. She yeah. had that set. Okay. Yeah. And so now for memory's sake, yeah. well, that's what we do here. So I guess I'm selling Bill a teacup set. And uh, no bottles for Bobby. I'm going to have to keep my eyes open for bottles. And Eagle stuff, last time, I think I gave you a belt buckle, right? Yeah, you gave me a belt buckle. Yeah, so there we go. There's always something for somebody around here.
It is the end of the day and I thought, hey, what a great idea. I will wax the floor. The problem is, you know the expression, don't paint yourself into a corner? My light switch is back there, which means lights are staying on overnight tonight because I can't walk on the floor <laughs> for at least probably an hour or so. Oh well, didn't think that one through, but that's okay. So the store will be nice and lit up tonight. That's all right. Anyway, another, uh, I don't know, didn't go out and buy a whole lot today, but I did go on a couple adventures, got some stuff over to auction. And if you are watching this video, you need to go check out kauctions.ca. That's where we sell a lot of our stuff, um, including uh, next on the 21st will be a whole bunch of sports cards and uh, collectibles that we got from an estate. And um, this weekend is the last of the musician's house. Uh, all the jewelry and some of the stuff around the house is going up. So two big auctions coming up. That's enough to keep me busy on this cold wintry day. You guys stay warm wherever you are. Uh, I'll be bundled up nice and warm here and uh, look forward to seeing you guys all soon. And as always, bye for now.